Thanks for tuning back in, and if this is your first time here, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about MIDI. I'm currently using the brand new Roland V71 as my main module, and my backup module backup, my second module, is the Roland TD50X. In today's video, I'm going to only discuss MIDI. I won't do any playing examples, only because those are in all my other videos. So first of all, what is MIDI? Um, MIDI came out in the early 80s. So this technology has been around for 40 years. This is not new. This is really old and archaic, if you really think about technology, but still, you know, highly usable. You know, one would think that it's a bit complicated, and it's not. Most things in technology, sort of once you get past that hump of this sounds really complicated, and you realize how easy it is, things like you know adding sound packs to a module seems like it's highly technical. It isn't. Once you do things like this, you realize, oh my goodness, this is so simple, um, and then you move on. So... I've been playing V drums since the late 90s, and every time I buy a new flagship module, I've always sold my other one off. When I sold my 30, I lost all those kits. And when I upgraded my 50 to the X, I lost all those kits. So, you know, starting with the 30, I used to add sound packs, and then the 50, I added sound packs. Then you get the X, and it's a different platform, so your sound packs no longer work. You lose all that editing that you've done. You lose all of that sound. So when you sell it, it's gone. You're starting over. And that's sort of been kind of a good thing because it allows you to really deep dive into the new module and you learn it a lot faster. But you lose all of your kits that you absolutely love and you're used to playing. This time around when the 71 came out and I was on different forums on uh, Facebook groups, etc., I think a couple guys commented, hey, why don't you just keep your 50X and MIDI it? And, you know, because I had already done a lot of work with MIDI, sort of the what if in my mind scenario came out and like, yeah, why not? Um, and I got to tell you, it's an absolute boatload of fun and uh, highly recommend it no matter which two modules you use. So let's talk about sort of the pluses and minuses. First of all, I'm going to go over how do I do it with these two particular modules. Um, because the 71 is the evolution of the 50X, uh, it, it's very similar. It's different in some of its architecture, but it's very similar in many ways. Uh, meaning, you know, the 71 has 14 total inputs, including the three digital, and it's exactly the same as the 50X. So from an, a MIDI channel perspective or a MIDI note number perspective, it's, it didn't need to do, I didn't need to do any work at all. It's already pre-mapped. So let's talk about, you know, how you get into MIDI in the first place. So I have the two modules. I have left and right master outputs going into my mixer. I use a Zoom L12 mixer because I have my iPad, two modules, I have my laptop, I have my Octopad, I have my Nord Drum 3P, I have my music. All of that goes into my mixer and that's what comes into my headphones. So if you don't have a mixer, you know, stop this video right now, go look at buying a mixer. They're not that expensive. Uh, this one's a, a little bit more expensive, but not outrageous. It's a L12 Zoom. Uh, it's a digital mixer. I can do all my recording in this, uh, and it serves the purpose of here in the studio, balancing off my sounds quickly and easily into my headphones. So that's the audio setup. Um, there's no such thing as audio over MIDI. That doesn't exist. USB carries audio. That's a whole different thing when you're dealing with laptop and your modules. That's a whole different thing. MIDI does not carry audio. So all you need is a straight MIDI cable. Easy to do. Just look it up. You can buy them on Amazon. Buy them anywhere. Um, what you do need is, in this particular case, both modules have MIDI in and out. And that's important because MIDI out, using MIDI out says, I'm saying that that is my primary module. So in this case, I have the MIDI cable from my 71 out into my MIDI in 
on my 50X in. Um, none of my pads on the kit are connected to the 50X. Um, I kind of think in my mind, you know, it'd be kind of cool to see what if I threw a pad, you know, connected a pad there, does that extend my kit? And it probably does, uh, because I think once I connect a, a pad into the 50X, that individual pad will solely be run by the 50X. So let me get back on track here. So MIDI cable out to in, all my pads are connected to my 71. So from a MIDI perspective, when I go to both modules, let's start with the 71. All I do is I'm hitting setup and then the screen pops up in the menu items. It says system MIDI, I hit enter and I'm in that. And you know, it's showing uh, global MIDI channel is 10. It's on the 10 channel. And that's sort of your standard across all MIDI instruments, channel number 10. 10 means it's looking for item or uh, it's looking for an, a, another thing working on the 10 channel. So there's channel and MIDI note number. So MIDI note number is the individual note that is being transmitted. So in this case, all my pads are connected to the 71. I go over to the 50X and I hit setup. And here I have to use the up down arrows or not arrows, the page, the page up down and I hit page down and there it is. So I have to hit F1, there's MIDI, um, same thing. So now the two menus, if you will, are aligned. The only one change I did was I turned program change off because what I wanted and I turned it off in both modules. What I wanted was when I change the kit number in the 71 by turning program change off that um, it breaks the chain, if you will. So remember that using MIDI, what you're doing is you're, is the, the primary module, in this case, the 71 is speaking to the 50X and it's transmitting the data. So all it is is just an interchange of data and it's saying I'm hitting this MIDI note number at this velocity. So let's say in the snare, the snare for a second, this has three different MIDI note numbers, the head, the rim, and cross stick. Those are three different MIDI notes. You can assign MIDI notes, you can change them and do whatever you want. Here, if I'm leaving it just as is, when I hit the snare at whatever velocity I'm hitting, if I'm hitting that, when I hit that snare head, that MIDI note is going directly into the 71 and then immediately over to the 50X and it's saying he's striking the head at this velocity and therefore the snare sound in the 50X is also firing away. Same thing happens when I hit the cross stick or rim shot. Um, same exact thing. No matter which pad I hit, that MIDI note number is transmitting from the 71 over to the 50X. And I'm sure there's an audio MIDI, MIDI lag in there in the milliseconds. You can't hear it, or I can't hear it. Anyway, so I'm bringing this up because, you know, I'm currently using two very similar devices. Now, if I chose, let's say I chose to sell off my 50X and I replaced it with the Yamaha DTX-10 Pro. Um, if I do that, the DTX Pro that comes on the lower tier uh, DTX modules only has MIDI out, not MIDI in. The Pro X has MIDI out and in. Uh, I may have gotten that backwards, but I know the Pro doesn't have both MIDI and the other one does. Now you can use a USB hub and get around that. Anyway, so if I was using a different module, my point here is because I'm using the same architecture, the 71 and the 50X, I don't really have to get into MIDI note number, etc. When I change, if I changed it to another module that had MIDI in and out, a Mimic Pro, DTX Pro X, etc., something like that, and that module then became the secondary module. If I change to a DTX, more than likely, uh, I'm going to have to get a little bit under the hood and do some of the uh, MIDI note number editing. 
Not a big deal. I've done it extensively with my Octopad and Nordrum 3P. Then you get into well, what happens when you MIDI. So I've talked about this in, in other videos. The cool thing is, is that you know you have your master control on your modules and you have your sliders. So you know, I've thought about sort of, you know, matching kits, if you will. I say, hey, uh, you know, my kit number 67 in my 50X sounds really great with my kit number 32. And that's a really cool combination. So maybe I should change the name, the sub name in one of them to, you know, remind me either put it on my phone or just change the sub name. And that reminds me, hey, this kit goes with that kit. And I thought about that, but I like the open-endedness of it. The way I roll is I love to be inspired by sounds. So what I tend to do is I come in, I set up a kit, you know, I have my study or then I'm playing. When I'm, when I'm studying, I want a real acoustic sound uh, because I'm just studying my playing. And I find two kits here that are the most acoustic sounding kits I can find that complement each other. The levels are all good and I'm just practicing. When I'm playing or when I'm creating, that's a whole different ball game. Then I just spin dials. I'll dial up a kit on the 71 and I'll listen to the timbre of that kit and what it's doing and I'll just remember from in my mind hmm this would probably sound really good with this kit that I know very well on the 50x and I'll dial that kit up now sometimes you get into these weird things where you know in the toms let's say the tuning isn't quite right to my ear that's a good thing because you know I've played acoustic drums for 55 years um, and, you know, when you really get into the mechanics of an acoustic drum, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but, you know, pretty well versed in doing this because I have so much experience at it. You know, I know which type of shells I like. I know what type of rims I like. I know what kind of heads I like for that particular drum. I know how to tune a drum, etc. But, you know, the typical, just call it the, you know, the just flat line, basic understanding. If you take a tom... You have two different heads, unless you have a single-sided, you know, single-headed drum. You have two heads that resonate um, off of each other. The rims, the shell, everything has a has an everything has an influence on that particular tom's sound. The heads you choose, how you hit it, what you hit it with, where you hit it. But you know, the typical rule of thumb is if you tune the bottom head up a little bit compared to your top head, you're gonna get that downward tom pitch. Doom. That's because if you think about the physics of it, you're hitting the tom head, you hit the batter head, the air goes down and it hits the higher pitched rezo head and comes back up. And you hear that in that split instant. That's that pitch down. You would say, well, wouldn't it go the other way? No, it's, it, goes, it's, it goes that way. So my point of all of this is when you're using MIDI, you can get that same effect. When the pitches aren't quite in sync, to my ear, it's closer to an acoustic drum because an acoustic tom rarely has, you know, a, an exact pitch. Uh, so three different ways of thinking about a, a tom, if you will. Both heads t tuned exactly the same, hard to do, but you know, if you use a tuner and a really good ear, you can get there. Then they're resonating together along with that shell, and that's a pure tone, as pure as you're gonna get. Uh, bottom head slightly higher, bottom head slightly lower, completely changes it, and you guys should know what I mean here. Plus, you know, you get into muffling, etc. but I'm just talking about the basic tonality of an acoustic drum. Using MIDI, you have that same art if you will, in your hands, within your grasp. So you can easily change by using the sliders and the masters, the volume, which module do I wanna hear as the primary, whether it's a 71 or the 50X. And then with the toms, you can get all of these great overtones that to me make it even sound more like a real drum. So keeping in mind, the 50X has two layers of sound and the 71 has three. You can get up to five layers of sound. Uh, Luke eDrum Workshop did a really good video on MIDI. Uh, you know, he talks about um, you get into this weird phasing. 
you're going to hear that phasing issue. It, it, it's kind of an odd thing, but you'll hear it immediately. So, you know, it truly depends on your imagination, what your primary module is, what your secondary module is. Even if you don't want to upgrade to the 71 and you currently have a 27 or something else and you're thinking about, you know, expanding or getting new sounds, you know, you no longer have to think about, oh, I have to sell off my X to buy Y. Uh, maybe now you should start thinking about maybe I keep it and because those are all the sounds that I love and I can add to it at will, if you will. Um, so, you know, key point here is there are a lot of kits on my 50X that I absolutely love and I would miss if I sold it off. So anyway, a um, lot of info. Uh, I hope I answered all of the questions on MIDI. Uh, any questions you have on it, just hit me up in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.